The Tale of Joffrey is a story about a knight who leaves King Arthur's court in pursuit of the villainous Taulat de Rogimon. And on his journey, he meets many dangers, many mysteries, surprises, and true love. And it's a story that first fascinated me ever since I first met it. It was written in Occitan for a King of Aragon, probably, I think, in the year 1225. And it still survives in two manuscripts, both of which would have been written later, which are kept in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. It also survives in some frescoes on the walls of the Al Jafaria Palace in Zaragoza. And it survived in Spain in chapbook form, retold in different ways up until the early 20th century. It's even mentioned as an inspiration for the Don and Don Quixote when he went off on his adventures. So it's a story with quite a long history. However, although there was a French adaptation in the 19th century, which was subsequently made into an English adaptation, and although there was a version that came out in the 1930s in English, it's largely been ignored outside of Spain. There is um, an intriguing thing, which is it was found as a, a, a metrical romance in the Philippines, probably taken there by the Spanish. But beyond that, it's mostly known in Spain. And I first came across Geoffrey and his adventures when I was studying the literature of the troubadours at university at Warwick. And I loved it and I wanted to spend more time with it but life took over and I went on with other things. But there is something about that story and it's brought me back time and again. And finally, I was able a few years ago to complete a PhD. I finished the PhD last year, 2019 at Cardiff University. And I was concentrating then on how it is told as a story, the storytelling skill of its creator. And as such, I took it out on the road. I took it out in English to audiences here, there and everywhere. And I was probably the first person in history to tell the story to an English audience in English. There's also a story behind the story because I think the story was written for James I of Aragon. And in 1225, he would have been 17 years old. The story is perfect for a 17 year old. And he was married to Leonor, who was a granddaughter of Alienor of Aquitaine and Henry II of England. And that would explain why a story about King Arthur was being told in Aragon. So all of these years and a few rigorous years of research later, and I still love this story. So I've been writing my own retelling of the story, attempting to preserve some of the humour and the liveliness of the original. I don't know if I mentioned that it's actually very funny, more Monty, Monty Python than you might expect. And putting some sections into rhyme as the original was written in rhyming couplets. I'm recording this this retelling as a podcast and I'm delighted to say that uh, there's a very fine musician in Australia, David Yardley, who is adding some beautiful uh, medieval-ish music to it to enhance the experience for you. So if you'd like to know more about the progress of this podcast, please like this page or send me an email to anne at annlister.com, that's Anne with an E. If you'd like to hear a story that's remarkable and true, full of intelligence and chivalry and brave daring do, adventures that are strange and bold, battles that are tough, then I'll tell it the way I heard it if I remember it enough. But it's best if you pay attention, listen close to what I say, for if you chat and whisper I would waste my time today, you've got to lend your ears and heart to hear a story well. So come up close and gather round for the story I will tell is a royal tale, a lofty tale, a tale of the finest sort. It's a story of King Arthur and of the royal court. Hope to hear from you.